Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy, and in this video tutorial, we're going to look at one of the applications of Archimedes' principle. Now, on the screen here, we have a sketch of something called a spar buoy, and spar buoys are used to provide floating foundations in offshore applications. As we look at that spar buoy, in the bottom, we have concrete ballast, or we have something heavy. And the reason we have that ballast there is that it will minimise any movement when there's waves or when the sea is choppy. It's almost like having a counterbalance at the bottom of the spar buoy. What we also notice in this diagram here is that there's a cable with a tension F supporting the mass or the weight of the spar buoy. So as it stands at the moment, if we were to remove that force, the spar buoy would sink because it's heavier or it has more weight than the weight of fluid that it's displacing. Underneath the diagram, I've just made some annotations there. MS represents the mass of the spar buoy, and we'll treat that as the mass of the spar buoy when it's filled with water, as shown in the diagram. So I'll just make a note when full. We have the mass of the water, and by that I mean the mass of the water that's being displaced by the spar buoy. So again, we'll make a note being displaced. And finally, I have MW slash S, which is the mass of the water inside the spar buoy. So if we look at the scenario as it's displayed there, if we wanted to work out the tension in the cable F, then what we would need to do is we would need to do a static equilibrium balance. Note that F is a force and not a mass. So what we would need is we would need the weight of the spar buoy, and the weight of the spar buoy would be acting downwards. And we'll call that WS in keeping with our notation for masses. But also acting on that spar buoy would be an up thrust. So again, we'll mark this on. We have an up thrust, U, and the up thrust results from the weight of fluid displaced. So what we can see here is that the forces acting upwards must equal the forces acting downwards. So we can balance the forces. If this is in equilibrium, then F plus U, the forces acting upwards, must equal the weight of the spar buoy when it's filled with water. Therefore, the force is going to be the weight of the spar buoy minus the up thrust. Well, in the context of a question, it's likely that the mass or the weight of the spar buoy would be given. So what we can write here, instead of WS, is we can write the mass of the spar buoy times gravity. Recall that weight in the top left corner is just mass times gravity. And the up thrust is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. Well, the weight of fluid displaced is going to be the mass of the water displaced. Again, multiply by gravity. And depending on the context of the question, we might be given the volume of the spar buoy and the density of water and so on. But we can work out the mass of fluid being displaced and we can work out the weight of fluid being displaced, providing we've got sufficient information. Let's just change the context of this question slightly. And this time I'm going to assume that the force is known and what I want to determine is the mass of the spar buoy. So again, we'd need to do a force balance because acting downwards, we've got the weight of the spar buoy and acting upwards, we've got the up thrust due to the weight of fluid displaced. So my force balance is the same as before, the forces acting down equals the forces acting up, so I would get the weight of the spar buoy equals the force or the tension in the cable plus the up thrust caused by the weight of fluid displaced. And we've already said that weight is mass times gravity, so what I would have is the mass of the spar buoy times gravity equals force in the cable plus the up thrust, which we've got various different ways of calculating. And therefore, the mass of the spar buoy could be found using the force in the cable, or the tension, plus the up thrust divided by gravity. And that would give us the mass of the spar buoy when it's filled with water. So there's numerous different calculations we can do, providing we've got sufficient information. So let's change the scenario once again. And this time, the spar buoy has been emptied. What we've effectively done is we've pumped the water out of the spar buoy. What that's going to do is it's going to reduce the mass of the spar buoy, 
and therefore it's going to reduce the weight of the spar buoy. It's going to make it more buoyant in effect. We still have the ballast in the bottom to provide stability. And what we want to know is that if this system's in static equilibrium, what is the mass that we're able to support when the spar buoy is emptied? Now, because we're dealing with masses this time, if the weight equals the upthrust, then the mass acting downwards must equal the mass of fluid displaced. I'll just state that again. If the upthrust equals the weight acting downwards, and it must for this system to be in static equilibrium, then that has to be the same as saying that the mass of water being displaced equals the total mass acting downwards. That has to be true in order for the upthrust to equal the weight acting downwards. We could have written the weight of water being displaced equals the total weight. And we know that the weight of water acting downwards is the same as the upthrust acting upwards. So U equals W total. But let's go back a step and work with our masses instead of our weights. And if we're trying to find that additional mass there, what we need to do is we need to break our mass total down into each of its elements. So what we have is we have the mass of the water equals the mass of the spar buoy, but we need to subtract the mass of the water that was inside the spar buoy. That mass is no longer acting downwards. What we have instead is we have this void. And to that, we would need to add our new additional mass. So now it's really just a case of rearranging that formula because if we want to find M, the additional mass, we would need to subtract MS from each side and we would need to add MWS to each side. And that would leave us with MW minus the mass of the spar buoy plus the mass of the water that was originally inside the spar buoy. So again, we'd have different ways of calculating this. The mass of the water would be the density times the volume of the water. And the reason for that, again on the left hand side, is that density is mass divided by volume. Therefore, mass is density times volume. So if we know the volume of the spar buoy that's submerged, we could work out the mass of the water that's being displaced. It's likely that the mass of the spar buoy would have been given in the question, and the mass of the water that's left the spar buoy, again, can be calculated using density times volume. If we know the volume of water that's been removed from the spar buoy, we can then calculate the mass of the water that's been removed from the spar buoy. So just to conclude, spar buoys are a brilliant way of providing a stable floating platform for offshore constructions. And the reason why is we can position them whilst they're filled with seawater. And then what we can do when we want to apply the load to them is we can pump out the seawater, which is in effect going to make the spar buoy more buoyant. A couple of other important takeaways from this is we can balance masses using Archimedes principle or we can balance forces. But the important thing is not to mix the two and always to be clear whether you're working with forces or whether you're working with masses.